welcome back <laughs> yes this for another module for atmospheric climate and weather analytics so for this module or we can say like the fourth module we will study about time series and AOF analysis AOF stands for empirical orthogonal function so in this module we will learn how to work with stats model and also how to work and interpret uh, EOF's function so for this module the teacher give us like six uh, six problems and yeah uh, it's like a range from the preparation until applying stats model and then yeah applying EOF's function and until uh, we interpret uh, the result of the EOF so we can start from uh, my life uh, my life window so this is like my Jupyter notebook about the assignment or the fourth module so create data set of SST and precipitation ano anomalies here uh, you can see that uh, yeah it's just like a, a normal Jupyter notebooks we need to load the, the needed modules maybe the thing that uh, new and especially like a Mm, this thing for this uh, module is this one so you need to like recall the stats module and then the tensor flow and collections also uh, the AOFs uh, from x-ray yeah but yeah actually I just copy paste I know that like, some module it's not be used but yeah just like it <laughs> And then for the SST, actually, it's the same uh, procedure that we that I already uh, used for the second module about depths and X array something. So I retrieved the SST data from ukar uh, ukar .edu, but currently the link is not being active because there is like a maintenance issue with the website but yeah if you can if you access in the other time maybe it will work yeah so the problem uh, asks us to have to to analyze the data from 79 until 2021 it's like a monthly mean so it will be very happy for your local machine or for your SPG. Um, to be compared with daily or maybe the worst like hourly data so it's just like a uh, load the data the procedure is same here the different one is uh yeah because the teacher asks us to have like lancy maxed but yeah after some trial uh i just realized that actually the sst already maxed with like lancy so i don't apply it but i just call it and this is like the figure of the SSD. I plot it because I want to know <laughs> because there is an issue with LSM. So that's why I want to know actually uh, what happened with my data, with my original data. Yeah, and then I apply it. Uh, yeah, be yeah, because the problems ask us to have like a data set of, uh, ano uh, of SSD anomalies. So I proceed and I calculate the anomaly just by subtract uh the like monthly mean sst with with their average and then yeah i just want to know what happened uh with the anomaly it's pretty good so yeah i just carry out uh the assignment and then for the saving procedure i just like saving in my local computer here i use like the uh, supercomputer of my department so yeah so maybe your directory may be different but here mine's i just like uh, simply save it in my local computer and then for the precipitation data it's a bit different because before uh, i applied like precipitation data from the second module if you may uh, if you still remember it's from like amazon web service yeah, but apparently there is like um, uh, what is like there is an issue with that data. Actually, you can you can see in my another Jupyter notebook. I made this notebook just to confirm that what's the what's the issue with the data from Amazon. Yeah, but apparently I 
I can't figure out yet like what happened yeah but yeah uh, and then I decided to use like precipitation data uh, provided by uh, yeah in which the code provided by my teacher actually this is not direct precipitation data with millimeter units it's like a flux like the sum it like the sum of uh, large scale and convective precipitation flux if i'm not mistaken so the units uh, if i'm not mistaken is kilogram per meter uh sec yeah, second quadrant it's just like that this one in here a uh, precipitation is the sum of a uh, large scale precipitation flux and also the convective precipitation flux because of the difference of because i use the different data that's why i just curious and then plot it actually for this one is it's be clear about the difference between two that two precipitation data but but here i just plot with the rda uh, rda data or ukar ukar data so yeah for the precipitation uh for the precipitation variable we don't need to land max so like this one is the plot and this one is the anomaly actually the procedure of anomaly calculation is just same with the sea surface temperature and then i just save it it's just easy like previous one and then we come to the second to the second what is uh second problem so apply the statistical processing like decisional decisional detrain and standardization why we apply this one because uh actually this module is about uh is talking about eof or maybe we can say like pta or principal component analysis so to perform that we have to uh, like a data the stationer and then stationer and then standard decision so because uh, our sst anomalies is just like a raw data so we need to apply this one and to make sure that our data is like stationer first one we we are perform the decisional the yeah, decisional process but yeah actually it's a bit confusing because the anomaly apparently is like a same procedure with like a decisional like a decision uh so yeah i just like subtract the and by group by by the moon and then like subtract with the mean in here you can see this is like my original data this is like the anomalies of the sst like the row one and this is the decisional and I can't find like any difference even though I know that this is a no mean like you drop yeah like you drop a distinct pattern on time series like every period of regular interval in your data set yeah the seasonal can be like uh, yearly monthly or like hourly timely or whatever it is like yeah for example like minus temperature in winter or like radiation during daylight yeah but apparently I I can't find like the difference, the difference between the original SST anomaly with the decisional data. So yeah, that's why I'm just confused. That's why I decided to plot of them. And then uh, for the trend, so the trend is like a drop the trend uh, in the data set. Yeah, the trend usually marks as like increasing. Yeah, because we can see like the this one is like because it's the same with the original SST anomalies you can see like there is an increasing of anomalies uh, anomalies uh, SST anomalies uh, of our pacific area so uh, because we need we want to have like a stationary data st yeah. so we need to detrain yeah this one is the function of how we detrain the data uh, and we detrain by the time so yeah uh, we can see that uh, after the trend of the data we have like a bit stationary data in which uh, the data now have like a same variance like yeah like uh, almost in a stationary and then after the trend we need to apply standardize so yeah by standardize yeah we attempt to have like a same standard deviation from the data set the data set so uh, there will no like data that have higher weight just because they have higher standard deviation and vice versa and also 
because PCA, uh, yeah, our AOF or so our PCA will calculate or find new projection of the data. So it will be good. Yeah, it will be good if we have like a data with a standard with a standard uh, value, and most of yeah, not almost like. Mm, yeah, many module only work with like a stationer and like a standard data. So yeah, that's why uh, we apply standardization. Standardization and also for the standardization, actually there are so many function. But here, I uh, applied as like my teacher suggested. So it's like the subtraction. Um, subtraction the mean from the regular uh, from the data data point and then. Uh, yeah, and then divide it and then divide it by the standard deviation. It's just like that. And then, yeah, here we can see there is a change in the value before, like, we have mean 1.5 until like 1 point, oh, until 1.5, and now after the standard deviation, we have like the maximum one is like 3, and then the minimum one is just like min, uh, minus, minus 3 just for the standardization after that uh, we solve uh, for the problem number three it's like perform an EOF with a weighting consideration yeah in here this is like a just a chain process so we can't perform number three until we uh, finish number two so after the, the trend decisional and also the standardization we use that result for the EOF calculation and here we can see, uh, I just like name the data set. So we have like data array with uh, this variable name. And then because of the D trend, we have we get like uh, additional coordinates. So that's why I also drop the coordinate, like the name of the new coordinates. It's like a month. And then after I, uh, I, ma I made sure that the data set is already good to be precise to be proceed so yeah i just like apply waiting uh correction by the latitude and then this one is uh how we apply the eof it's just like a function uh, provided by the x array yeah and then yeah we can see uh here because there is because the problems ask us to have like uh, the first five aof expressed as correlation that's why uh, i also uh, calculate the correlation and here I choose uh, I choose a uh, number of AOF uh, or number of modes is 10 because in another problem uh, the teacher asks us to to have like a plot for the first 10 modes and here uh, the code uh, like the code how to uh, have like a five a subplot in one figure so this one is like the first AOF actually but the name is AOF 0 because Python is start with zero, and we can see that the first, uh, the first five uh, as expressed have like a quite a good correlation with the first one is like have a strong correlation, especially in the Pacific, uh, uh, in the Pacific area or Nino, uh, three point five, three point four area, uh, area, and then. For number four, uh, we need to plot the percentage of variance explained by the first 10 EOF. Sorry, there's like a typo. Uh, and then, um, yeah, we can see that, yeah, the first, the first, uh, the first modes, like, they, uh, it can explain like more than 17.5% variance in the data and followed by the second, the third, until like the five one. Actually, it will be good if you also plot like, the 95 or like the 19 percentile so we can uh we can see that which one has like the most uh, the most uh variance explained by the mo the mode yeah but yeah i didn't perform it so yeah just like know that okay the uh the first uh the first AOFs yeah usually have the greatest uh percentage of total variance after that after know that the Five, the first one is very good in representing the variance of the data. I will construct the SST anomaly uh, by only using the five data. Yeah, the first five data. 
and then uh, yeah and then uh, like calculate the correlation between the, co- the reconstructed uh, assessed <laughs> anomalies and the observed as anomalies so this one is the map so we can see that in the area where the yeah apparently the common uh, nino 3.4 like there is a strong correlation between the reconstruct and also the as the observed anomaly it means that our five selected our first five selected modes like can uh divine or like uh, can can show the the data the, the data set for uh, the, the ssd anomaly data set and then the last one is uh compute a map of person correlation between reconstructed ssd anomaly the first reconstructed uh, ssd anomaly as and calculate and also the precipitation and here we say uh, for the precipitation we need to have like a statistical procedure before we uh, calculate the map so here we start from like a detrain the data and then decisional the data apparently for the uh, precipitation there is no trend or also there is no like distinct decisional that's why uh, the the graphic here bit same and uh, the difference just like for the standard decision so now the value change from like 0.0 like that one and uh, and then come to uh, a minus two until like four and then here I only reconstructed the SSD on money by using the first AOF because apparently the first AOFs have like a higher variance explained. So yeah, uh, I just reconstructed and then yeah, this one is the uh, person uh, the person correlation map between uh, reconstructor SST zero the first SST with precipitation anomalies. We can see that here uh, we can have like a common, not common, it's just like uh, display as like the com- yeah, the com- the common signal of the and so in this area. So we can expect that the SST, the uh, SST anomaly have like a strong correlation with the precipitation number in there and here by using our reconstructor SST anomaly we actually find that find the signal it means that our reconstructor reconstructed SST anomaly actually a, a good one even even though we only have we only use like the first mode but it can uh, define or it can explain uh, the data the original or the observed data anomalies so yeah this is for like uh the fourth uh time series and i also put the reference here the data and also the full code this one can be found here thank you and bye bye